Hello and welcome to another stream, another English stream in this case. Today it's all about sports and recreation. Welcome back, as I've mentioned in the introduction of this stream. Today uh, we're going to talk about sports and recreation in the English A-level exam, of course. Um, as always, I'm going to start with an overview of today's stream. At first, we're going to have a look at the topic itself and the subtopics and all the aspects you have to know for this topic, sports and recreation. Then we're going to jump right into the topic with the importance of sport and recreation then gonna have a look at sport and recreation in Austria followed by trends in sport and recreation their pros and cons and then as always we're gonna have a look at the demonstration exam in this case it's about the dangers of doping so um, a very um, present topic. Um, let's start with the overview of this topic, sports and recreation. Um, basically, you should know what you have to learn and what you, which knowledge you should acquire um, during the course. Um, of those of this one year or one and a half in order to uh, successfully pass the oral A level exam of course if you picked the topic sports and recreation um, basically this uh, this topic is subdivided into a few topics subtopics aspects mm which can be found in the um, book Berufsreife Prüfung. Um, basically, it's all about sports around the world, national sports, football, building a future, which is just a sub, -sub chapter. So important, of course, the Olympic Games. You should have some knowledge about it. Doping. Just know a few types of doping. Uh, extreme sports, uh, recreation, no activities, and sports and recreation in Austria. And of course, um, sports and recreation in Tyrol. Should know, also know about it. And then, as always, um, with the oral A level exam, add in your own knowledge. That's very important. And if you have um, problems or doubts about uh, aspects and subtopics and stuff you have to know um, for the exam, oral, oral exam, then also ask your tutor, your teacher, your lecturer, whatever, and they will help you out with it hope so. He or she will help you. Um, so, but when we speak about the importance of sport and recreation, um, I came up with several, those are basic, basically benefits. Um, and of course, you can add in your own if you have um, other ideas um, why it is important to do sports and also to um, do recreational activities you can uh, just write us a, a message in a chat and then we're gonna discuss it and come back to it later um, so sports and recreation basically one can say, at first, it reduces stress and pressure. Um, that's a very obvious 
thing, I think, and it's a very uh, well-known fact. And if you have done sports in, in the past or doing sports right now or you're just getting into sports, you know that it's really helpful to release pressure and stress. Um, of course, that's not the only way sports. Um, so if you look, for example, uh, take a look on instrument, for example, drumming, it's also kind of depends on which uh, genre you're drumming in. Can be seen as sports, so it's also reduced stress and pressure, but also every other activities you enjoy, uh, which um, support your um, brain basically to kind of um, blow off some steam or just to um, bring your brain into another um, mode of thinking and not over, uh, not constantly thinking about work or something else. Um, so what else? It also helps you stay healthy since it is you move your body, it's a physical activity. And of course, I think I don't have to explain to you that if you move your body, if you do something that is healthy and prevents you from maybe get sick or developing any kind of uh, disease or so. Um, it also can help you, I should add, can help you to m maintain a healthy weight. Um, that's a very uh, widely discussed topic. It's not only about sports, it's also about nutrition and the right diet. Uh, therefore, I wrote in parentheses in most cases. Um, it also helps you to stay focused during the day. So if you're doing, for example, four times a week, you're doing sports, you will uh, recognize after even the first week or two weeks that you um, can focus or you can better concentrate yourself on a specific task you're doing top, um, for example, at work or a, um, no matter what, it it's helps you to stay focused and concentrated. Um, it can boost your self-esteem. Um, I think this has more to do with uh, the competition maybe. If you're getting better at sports and you start kind of seeing uh, some results maybe speaking about for example specific time limit uh, during running or something and you just uh, have those um, moments of victory and do and you can boost your self-esteem yeah of course it also can teach you teamwork and problem solving skills more or less this um, aspect is concerned with team sports of course of course uh, some soccer or basketball or football or anything else that you play in a team and problem solving skills also goes with it since there are normally in a team there are a lot of people uh, with which you should um, be in good terms, I guess, and you also should be able to solve several problems that, um, yeah, that kind of come out during this period or during uh, uh, the time where you you're in the team. Okay, so. Same goes with um, the importance of recreation and sport. Um, if you have any other ideas, importance uh, concerning the importance, just write us. 
Okay, so sport and recreational activities in Austria basically are the traditional classic ones, um, hiking, skiing, cycling, golfing. There are a lot of golf, golf courses in Tyrol too. So, Water sports, sailing, windsurfing and so on. Climbing, trail running, but also spa, lakes and swimming, which are more the recreational. I guess hiking can be labeled as recreational too, if it's not too um, too exhausting, I guess. But of course, there are a lot of spas, there are a lot of hotels that also offer um, an evening at the spa or sauna and so on, steam bath. Um, of course, in Tyrol we and in Austria, in whole Austria, we have a lot of lakes um, and also swimming pools that you can go to and just enjoy yourself and have a good time and recreate. Yeah, that's um, Austria. I think um, has um, a lot of opportunities to um, do recreation. Um, yeah, but there's, of course, um, if you're maybe visiting a, the, uh, Bergisel Museum, museum in, uh, Innsbruck, it's also kind of recreational. Maybe after you've just completed a trail run, um, at, on Natterer Boden or something, you can go to the um, um, museum and then recreate yourself. Yeah. Or jump in a lake. It's also cool. Or in the sill, as you want. Um, trends. So, trends basically, I came up with. I, I know there are. A recent trend such as stand up paddling and so on. But I guess a, a big trend or uh, yeah, a, a type of sports that a lot of people are doing is um, um, cup, um, connected to high intensity interval training. So that's basically when you have high. Um, an interval of high intensity and then followed by a short period of relaxation and then uh, you're peaking your pulse again which of course leads to a lot of um, uh, you can burn a lot of calories with it that's what I wanted to say um, very recent I guess um, I think you all know a few of the training um, methods or um, sports such as um, body weight training and so on and also mixed sports with body weight and you have um, also training with weights and so on. Uh, then trail running I guess is um, getting more popular or a lot of um, 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 competitions in Tyrol and in Austria and South Tyrol. Climbing, a lot of people actually do um, go out and climb, but also, of course, boulder. They do a lot of bouldering and so on. Um, hiking, I think, was, uh, always has been uh, sort of a important thing in Austria so maybe not a trend but a lot of people start hiking now I think and of course spas they're um, kind of um, becoming more and more popular so and people kind of uh, get used to um, hotels having spas and they expect that certain hotels have spas and so on um, the pros basically um, those are more or less concerned with sports helps you stay fit um, help you lose weight help you stay in shape 
but uh, with recreation, for example, it also helps you to relax and just blow off steam and kind of forget everything around you, as with sports, of course. Um, the cons with modern trends in sport can be serious injuries, which basically um, can be traced back to a lack of experience. If you're doing the exercise the wrong way, it can lead to serious injuries. So be careful with it. Um, don't think that you, if you're just starting out with a different uh, type of sport, um, that you're really good at it and try to kind of um, imitate others that you see on Instagram or something like this. Um, so start slow, as we vary everything in life. Um, sometimes the looks get more important than the actual sport that it is perfect performed which means of course uh, the modern trend that sport is not um, a thing that one does uh, because it's fun but one does because it helps you to um, reach a goal um, to for example have a six-pack so look look better um, and of course often modern sports or some of them can be expensive although of course body weight training isn't that expensive and if you have a kettlebell or something it's not that expensive but it can get expensive so it's um, some sort of a con let's label it um, so let's get to the demonstration exam analysis. So um, this case it's about the dangers of doping as I've already mentioned. So first of course we're gonna start off with the introduction. I'm gonna skip the part. Um, I hope you can see. Yeah. Task one in this case is the monologue. You have four minutes. Um, the situation is dangerous of doping. In this case, you're working for the International Olympic Committee and you have been invited to a sports school for young athletes to inform coaches and students about doping. So, in this case, you should um, talk about what doping is and why athletes do it, the dangers of doping and if and how dopers should be punished. So that's all about the monologue. Maybe um, try to talk a bit more so that you're on the, on the kind of safe side concerning the time limit. Then uh, task two is about the Olympic Games. Um, as with every other demonstration exam, this is the dialogue now, and you open the discussion up um, about the Olympic Games. Olympic Games. You also have an article uh, with which uh, which you uh, should use, and in this case, the article is about nobody can afford to host to host the Olympics, but at the IOC, the Largese never stops. Um, yeah, and then a follow-up discussion, of course. As with every other exam, I just emphasize it again, you should have not only the ideas from the article, but also um, your own ideas. So it's very important. Um, Add in your own knowledge and then everything will be fine. Okay, um, that's basically it 
from today's stream. If you have any questions or suggestions, um, you want to add anything to today's topic, write us in the comments below and we will get back to them as soon as possible. Uh, so far so good. Have a great evening and see you next week.